so before I start, how many people have actually used crossbow or experimented use? Okay, we have some numbers. <laughs> okay, so oh. Uh oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, we'll see what is crossbow, and uh, I'll just go over the features of crossbow that. Uh, uh, or rather the features that Crossbow introduced into Solaris and a little bit about kernel implementation, how it works inside the kernel and what are the benefits and how we can use it uh, and some examples, I'll just go through some commands and, and what's the uh, next things planned for Crossbow. So what is Crossbow? It's virtualization of uh, service protocol and virtual machine, virtualization of the network. That means if you have uh, X number of uh, like how you have for OSS, the same way we have virtualization for your network as well. So ex you can have as many number of uh, uh, interfaces that you can use it for any number of guests or for your host OS itself. We'll see how uh, how the virtualization is done. Oh, before that, uh, Rosbo went into um, build 105 of uh, Nevada, which is a code name for our so Open Solaris source, and it's also there in uh, uh, the 20906 the CD is what you are getting. So this is, where is virtual, where is crossbow? So crossbow sits between your driver and your IP, IP layer. So uh, it's all in that MAC layer that we have here. And uh, um, what does it do? So you have three number of, three physical NICs here. That means your system has only three physical cards. It will, it will uh, but for your IP layer, it will give you as many number of NICs that you want. It will, uh, this are, those are all virtual links that you see at the top. Uh, you can create aggregations and you can create virtual switches and on those virtual switches we can uh, create virtual links or in your physical link itself can uh, be converted into a virtual link or a VLAN. Even the aggregations, on, even on the aggregations you can create multiple uh, links. So for IP layer when he looks down he will see so many, number of, so many number of physical links. He will be seeing that there are so many number of physical links and he can use it however he wants it. You can plumb it, you can create, I mean, however you usually use your NICs. So what are the features? Um, first thing that Crossbow aimed was performance improvement. So I'm sure you are now aware of uh, the hardware classification. Um, so Crossbow takes advantage of all this and improves performance as well. We'll go into more details of, about this. And switching between polling and interrupt mode, this was one of the major changes. Uh, that is whenever a packet comes, it will interrupt and then in that interrupt context you try to process the packet and push it up as high as possible. Now what Crossbow does is uh, as soon as you get a packet, it will go disable the interrupt first and then go into polling mode. That means it will keep on pulling the packets as much, uh, 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 I mean whatever uh, uh, packets are coming, it will keep on pulling it up. Um, and once you don't get packet for certain duration, you will uh, go back, enable interrupt and then wait for the next packet to come. So it's a dynamical switches between polling and interrupt mode. So this has improved performance a lot. But otherwise you get a packet, uh, you try to process it, before you finish it you get another interrupt or by the time, uh, you, or let's say you do finish it, but then interrupts change context a lot. So you have a lot of context switches. This has brought down a context which is by huge amount of time. And it's NUMA aware, that means all connections are bound to CPUs. So any uh, Processing for a particular connection is happens on only one CPU. So you have multiple connections, they get bound to different CPUs. So uh, all your caches are warm and you get better uh, cache hits and better performance. Faster forward forwarding paths, so some improvements have been improved, uh, some improvements have been made in the forwarding path as well. And it takes uh, advantage of hardware rings if your hardware supports it. It can do classifications, it can ask the uh, hardware saying that, okay, give me um, port number 80 on this particular ring or give me this IP address on this ring. So you can do classifications and uh, this also improves your performance a lot. Virtual switches, uh, we saw in the previous slide, what you see there at Ether, they are virtual switches. 
So uh, it's like how you have your physical switches connected to different uh, hosts, different machines, right? So similarly, we have a, we have a virtual switch now, with which you can on which you can create multiple NICs. So it will appear as if uh, uh, you, uh, you have got three NICs connected to the same switch. Um, you can uh, use it as standalone switches, and even on a physical NIC, if you are creating multiple NICs on top of it, it will create a dummy Ethern. Uh, Ether step over there, we'll see that also. And it's also very useful in your network in a box. That means you can have multiple, you can create a whole subnet inside your one machine. And service virtualization, that is, um, you can, uh, uh, this is called flows as well. You have a command called flow ADM. You can say, okay, give me, uh, or you can uh, give resource control or, uh, or on a particular service. That is, you can say for HTTP traffic, I want to tr reserve of, uh, or not reserve, uh, I want to have a bandwidth of not more than 20 Mbps or uh, this kind of things. So you can have uh, not just on uh, uh, port numbers, you can do it for IP address transport, so many things. And resource control, bandwidth, CPU, you can say for this particular VNIC process all packets only on CPU 1 and 2. Uh, IP instances of, uh, with zones. Uh, the problem was that uh, if you have lo multiple local zones, from inside one zone, you could even see what's happening on the other zones. So you, you can, or rather you could, uh, although it zones said initially that uh, it provides isolation, but as that was not true in the networking case. You can say netstat minus s and you'll get the statistics for the whole system, not for that your own system. You could do ARP minus E and then get your IP addresses on the whole system. You can, uh, uh, that uh, uh, even uh, although it said it will uh, give isolation, you are still uh, able to find out what are the other IP addresses and the other zones. So that was one thing. So now uh, this one with IP instances part of the crossbow, it isolates all your uh, zones. And resource management, okay, so it's same, you can say that for this particular VNIC which I'm giving to this zone, um, give only this much bandwidth or give only this CPU. And uh, when you create a zone, you have the option of giving IP uh, physical cards. Now the same has been extended for VNIX. Anything that has come out of crossbow, the same NIC can be used uh, for your zones. And accounting uh, per VNIC, per flow, I'll give some examples of that. Okay, this is uh, something which is uh, inside the kernel. Um, uh, this is not exactly, okay, uh, let me explain how this works. And so you have uh, receive rings, transmit rings. In the Mac layer, we have something called a soft ring set. Um, like how you see in the next slide, it could be more than one soft ring set or it could be just one. If this is in case where you don't have multiple rings. So, uh, and so one soft ring set can um, actually grab more than one rings, physical, physical rings, or uh, it might be one, just one. This is the receive side, this is the right uh, transmit side. Um, you don't have two SQs. Uh, it's the same soft ring set which handles both receive side right and uh, right side. So I'm just giving a different view of receive side and right side. So on the receive side, uh, you have one soft ring set. Soft ring set uh, creates multiple soft rings on top of it. Uh, this is based on how many NICs you want. If you create a one NIC on top, it will create one soft ring. <laughs> or rather, uh, all soft rings are created in pairs. And that's because we want to separate out TCP traffic than uh, non-TCP traffic. That's because we want to beat numbers with our competing OSS. Um, um, and of course, most of the traffic is anyway TCP, so we have a separate soft ring for uh, uh, TCP. Uh, like if you see uh, two soft rings, right? So one is for TCP only, one is for non-TCP. And on every soft ring, you have a SQ. SQs are, uh, okay, let me just tell, explain about SQs. SQs was there before uh, Crossbow also. So let's say you have multiple connections. Uh, you group some of the connections and call it a SQ. Uh, that grouping is random. So as soon as, whenever you do a connect, the CPU on which you are uh, um, making the connect, uh, the connection goes and gets into the SQ that belongs to that SQ. Uh, so you group uh, uh, connections into SQs. You bind that SQ to a CPU. So all processing that happens in those connections will be on that CPU. Um, that is, if you do a write, it will happen on that CPU. If you, if you get a packet from inside, uh, from over the wire, it will ha it will happen on the CPU. But there's no guarantee that it has to be. You do a write on a different CPU. The thread is doing a, running on a different CPU. He does a write, but he does it on a connection which is belong to this this CPU. How do you switch? Do you switch or not? 
that's a policy, I mean, it dynamically does it. That is, if you are doing a write, if there is, uh, in this CPU is, uh, or rather this kind of CPU is quite free, then it will actually switch. It, it knows how to, uh, whether it is advantageous to do the write on a different CPU or not. In the interrupt context, there is no guarantee that the interrupt for this particular connection will happen on this CPU only. It's only bound to one CPU, particular CPU. So how do you do that in such a case? So there is no guarantee. It can happen on a different CPU. It, in such a case, uh, the switching between polling and interrupt comes in hand. Now, because of that feature, what happens is um, uh, this SQ is in, goes into polling mode. The first packet, of course, it will happen in some other CPU. It will get up the stack. But since you have disabled the interrupt, now it has this, this SQ has gone into polling mode. So now he'll pull the packets up, and all those happens in one context. So all the connection processing for one, CP, one particular connection has, is now happening on one particular CPU. So your caches are warm, again, you get better performance. So that's about SQs. Uh, now soft rings. Uh, okay, I already told about soft rings. Um, so all these things, how Crossbow determines which soft ring set should have which uh, um, rings. So there is, uh, right now there is no policy as such, so what it is, it's actually inside the, the crossbow code itself. It will decide whether I should use a particular ring or not. You create a VNIC, it will create a couple of soft rings, uh, and now it will take up one ring if it's available. Uh, it will go on consuming rings as uh, one by one as they are created. And it has some rings reserved for the physical NIC that it will not give up at all. Um, but uh, right now there is no control, uh, user control. I might create one VNIC and then uh, I might create say uh, four VNICs and it will consume all your ring, uh, hardware rings. Or I might create some flows which will consume your hardware rings. And, but they don't, this uh, VNICs or this flows may not consume much bandwidth. And I, after that I might create some more rings or some, sorry, some more VNICs or some more flows which might actually take more, uh, consume more bandwidth. In which case uh, they'll actually use the global rings and you don't get better performance because all your hardware is already taken by some, somebody who is not consuming work money. So this problem is, is there in crossbow and is being addressed. Okay, benefits. Um, consolidation, I think this was there uh, before crossbow as well. So, okay, before that, okay, some more things about SQs. Uh, before crossbow we had SQs uh, which are again as I said bound to CPUs and all that. Now, um, Earlier, they had, for every CPU, there was only one SQ. But uh, now with flows, with more VNIX, you are creating more and more uh, soft rings and more and more SQs. So they also get bound to uh, CPU. So one CPU now can have more than one SQ bound to it. So, okay. so consolidation, uh, this was there before Crossbow. So cro what Crossbow added was the feature, uh, was that uh, all consolidation like this are, is not possible. This is just a exam simple example. You may not have... Uh, uh, three systems connected to one switch all the time, or uh, they might have a different, belong to different subnets. They might be connected over multiple switches. So all this, such setups was not possible to consolidate earlier. In fact, with IP instances, uh, this was one of the major uh, changes which helped in doing it, and of Crossbow, uh, uh, the whole major uh, project as well. So uh, Crossbow helps in doing consolidation as well. IP instances. Uh, uh, when uh, zones was zones features was integrated, um, the networking portion was uh, not designed for multiple subnets. They assume that all those who are creating zones will uh, belong to uh, the same subnet. But customers started using it in a different way. They started collect, uh, having multiple zones. All of them they started putting it in different subnets, um, and this started causing issues. It would sub work with just say two subnets, but with some routing entry hacking and all that. But it wouldn't work more than that. Customers started putting more and more zones with more and more subnets. And they started networking just fails. It doesn't work. I can't communicate. Some, also, some of them wanted uh, to communicate between zones. They said, okay, from this zone, I want to talk to this one because I have, I have such a setup. Some of them did not want. Some of them wanted complete uh, isolation. They said, in this zone, I should not be able to communicate to the other zone which is on my same system. They wanted complete, uh, complete isolation. So they had both these features and it was not possible to do it earlier. Uh, so with IP instances, what IP instances that did was, the, was that uh, uh, with zones now we have a new feature called uh, IP stack. You can say IP stack for this particular zone is exclu ex exclusive. So what it does is it completely separates your routing entries, your IP addresses, everything. It creates a separate stack. 
So that's how uh, even your accounting, it helps in accounting, keeping your accounting separate for, those, for that uh, uh, instance. Uh, so that was one of the major changes. Network in a box. Uh, so what can we do with network in a box? Uh, we can, uh, there are more m multiple virtualization for your OSS now in Solaris. We have virtual box, you have zones, you have Zen, LDOMs for Spark only, that is. Um, maybe I should not mention LDOMs. Uh, uh, okay, anyway, so you can combine all these things which are together uh, in one machine. So in one hardware box, you can say, uh, create four virtual box, so many zones, so many, and then make them all work together. Of course, you can see a small star over there, which means virtual box and then can't work with each other. Um, so you have to have only one of them running. Uh, uh, and there are some limitations also, like virtual, uh, uh, if you are having zones, you can't have Windows running in it. While you can do, it, do that in Zen or uh, um, virtual box, or maybe. Uh, Linux, you can run Linux in uh, uh, virtual box as well, or any other OSS. And, uh, okay, so this is one simple setup, wherein I have uh, two physical NICs, I have created uh, ether stub, so that, uh, as you see, the dummy ether stub, uh, you don't see it, you can't see it at all, even if you say DLDM commands or anything like that, you can't see this dummy ether NICs. They are automatically created whenever you create a VNIC on a physical interface. So the VNIC 0 and VNIC 1 are created on top of this physical NIC and I have assigned it to two different guests. Uh, similarly, this I have created standalone uh, ether stub and created three VNICs and given it to three different uh, guests. Uh, there are different type of guests. One is EB is virtual box zones and uh, guest 2 is uh, router. So it is routing packets between uh, this, this, this two subnet. And so virtual box, the uh, guest 4, Although he is completely uh, away from the physical link 2, he can still access it and can still go out of that or even through physical link 1. So depending on how uh, you have configured your whole subnet. So this is just an example of how you can do it. Or one more example is this way. So I have aggregated two NICs, created more VNICs on top of it and given it to two different guests. So, uh, with this, so now we can, VNIC 0 and VNIC 1 are now highly available because of the aggregation over here. Uh, this example have not been tested yet. So like, uh, once you create multiple VNICs and give it to a guest, like VirtualBox, he can use it in any way he wants. He'll see that he, uh, it'll, okay, VirtualBox will actually emulate and then say, okay, these are ethos interfaces. So he'll plumb three ethos interfaces. He doesn't know they are VNICs. He can create IPMP on it. Or he might actually create aggregations on top of it again. Um, which is, uh, okay, you can't do aggregations or something like that in, in a zone. It will not allow you to do that because the zones and the, your, or, uh, your host OS, they all share the same kernel. It knows that. But then uh, a virtual box doesn't. So you can create all these things. So there are some setups uh, which may not work properly because, it's, okay, in this case it should work. But then if you create aggregations on top of it, it doesn't uh, serve any purpose because anyway you have, would have created some aggregations or something like that below here. So you should know how your host configuration is done before you create some things inside a guest. Yeah, okay, some tips or something like that. Uh, um, how to, uh, that is if you are having multiple zones set up or something like that, you can use ZFS file systems and then easily snapshot, create multiple uh, zones, create multiple this one. So uh, you have a couple of commands, DLADM uh, and FluIDM for creating, uh, taking advantage of your crossbow things. Similarly, you have VB scripts, zone scripts, which can use uh, some things like this to create zone in a network. Save space, uh, and you can enable compression on ZFS file system, it will save much more space. And VirtualBox has an internal networking feature. You can have multiple guests, and they can talk to each other. It, uh, you can give any name that you want to that such, such an interface. But uh, uh, like Crossbow, it doesn't give you observability feature. That means you can't see what's happening. What's the traffic going between them? I'm able to, I'm not, why am I not able to ping from one virtual box guest, guest to another virtual box guest, even though they belong to the same subnet? Question. Yeah. Uh, so are you saying that Okay. 
to interface down to the physical network. Mm -hmm. And that did not work. Oh. Any, any reason why it should work? Mm -hmm. No, it should have worked. Uh, I mean, you are not able to communicate between the guests? Well, it was, it was being one of five. It might have been. Um, no, I think this part hasn't been changed much. Uh, was it in the same subnet or something, or was it in a different? Uh, I have two different address bases. I need to have the local box machines and the host talking to each other, and I need to bundle the virtual machines to so talk to each other. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is probably the same. I mean, this should work. This is the simple setup. So have you enabled IP forwarding and, yeah, okay. Router, okay, this has been covered before. So Solaris also, you take a box and crossbow, it could replace any expensive boxes in the market. And uh, well, uh, actually we are trying to get something like that as well. And a whole bunch of forwarding path improvement has been done, even with thousands of hundreds of thousands of routing entries, uh, it should scale well. Okay, so where can I, okay, I know what are the setups I can use. Uh, where can I use such a setup? Why, wha, how will uh, Crossbow benefit me? So one thing is simulation of a production setup. I have, I have to set up uh, my network over here. I have these machines, will it work? If I set up, set it up in this particular fashion, will it work? Um, or I have uh, IP filtering uh, policies or I have some firewalls. I have done a whole bunch of this one. Instead of getting so, such expensive hardware boxes, making uh, all those connections, that will take time. It will take a lot of resources, money and all that. So all these things can be tested inside a host easily and very quickly. So I can e easily build up all these things. I need say 10 Solaris uh, clients which want to bombard packets to one uh, uh, server. I can set it up uh, instantly. I can have one guest installed and then clone it and I have got 10 guests and then I have one server set up and then you test all these things so it can happen in a day's time or in an, uh, within hours. Uh, QA, I have developed a product. I want to test whether it will work on a particular setup. I want to see in what all particular, or what all different configuration it will work. Will it work in this configuration? Will it work in that configuration? I, uh, of course, uh, you are the one who have developed it, you will know it, but then without testing, I don't think anybody uh, or QA will actually uh, um, let it go forward. So this is the easy way to set it up and then uh, test your environment. And recreating issues, testing fixes, help in sustaining. A customer comes and says, I have this particular setup and then I'm not able to communicate between, between them or I'm, this is not working, something is not working. And it's a complex setup, getting uh, those physical hardware, recreating those, those issues, uh, customer is not going to give you access to his system to where you can go and then say, okay, let me set, set it up and then uh, let me see what's happening. So you can ask him, okay, what's the topology? You can recreate the whole topology inside one box and then recreate issues. Once, okay, yeah, you are, now you have figured it out. Yeah, this is the problem over here. There is a, pro a problem with my uh, software or with the OS itself. Let's fix it. Now I want to see whether it's working or not. Yeah, there you go. If you, have, you can set it up uh, such things very quickly. Observability, this is one more thing, very important thing. Uh, every meaning that you create, every VLAN or every aggregation you can create, you, create, you can snoop on it. You can see what's happening on that particular VNIC. It will not give you traffic on the whole system or anything like that. Only that is going through that VNIC. So, or uh, you can use D-Trace also, see what's happening in this particular. So you can see whether this packet, uh, I can, I'm sending a packet from here to here. It's going out of this VNIC, but it's not reaching there. Where did it go? So you can trace the whole path of that and then see, okay, yeah, it's going over here, it's being dropped because of this issue, it's being dropped because of what. You can go into individual zones and then get your uh, statistics, say that, okay, yeah, uh, I have got so many packets, I have dropped so many packets. Okay, best thing is it's free. Okay, let me show some examples. How to create, uh, creating an ether stub. So, 
this one shows that I have created uh, all that you see on the left hand side are something which you can use. Uh, you can see even zone stub 0, the fifth zone, uh, everything wherever you see stub is the ether stub that I have created. You can give any name that you want and I have given based on the host that I have uh, like stub S10U4 is for uh, uh, switch that I have created uh, on which the, I have created Venix which I am giving it to only S10U4 guests. So this kind of things and over what? I can see that uh, Ucon X0 is your, my physical card, actual physical card and zone, all those zone stub, stub 0 they are all stubs and the second, the class, uh, this one, it shows uh, what type it is, whether it is a physical car or a Venix. So this is, this shows that it is a physical car, this, is, this shows it is a ether stub, Venix. Let's see how we can create one more. So, okay, just entering this one will show you a whole bunch of options. Uh, minus T is temporary, that means I, I, whatever I do, it is not persistent. Anything that I do with DLEDM otherwise is persistent. That means like across reboot, whatever VNIC I create will remain there. Uh, I can say, oh, sorry. Uh, so I have one VNIC here. I can give any number. The format of any ether stub VLAN uh, VNIC is should be a string followed by a number. So this shows all the stubs. I just created the KCA09. So this is our dummy ether stub that is there in the this one. Create VNIC. So this shows this shows that uh, I have created the uh, KCA unique one here over this KCA V09, which is your my ether stub. This is the MAC address, and MAC address type is random. So it will automatically pick up a random, you can, uh, random MAC address. You can give a particular uh, MAC address if you want with a minus M option or you can set up bandwidth uh, management minus P. Oh, sorry. I'll give it a unique two. So I have created one more unique now and I have created with with max bandwidth saying 10M. So I can see this with the uh, show link prop. So this shows what is my bandwidth is, where is bandwidth over here. So it shows it set the maximum bandwidth test this one. You can change a whole bunch of other properties also with a uh, set link prop and uh, you can set, set priority. Priority is, uh, you can, it will even show you options. What is the default value? What is the possible values? What are the things that you can change it to? The priority shows uh, only low, medium, high. It will give more priority to something which is, by default it is high. So you can say that, okay, for this thing it gives the lowest priority. What other things you have? Okay, create VNIC aggregations. Okay, one more advantage of this one is uh, uh, that, uh, okay, I will tell you about that while we go to flows. Okay, let us create some aggregations. Now, uh, what was syntax? Create is here. So this shows the aggregations. Okay. 
okay, and all the properties of your aggregations. On on top of aggregations, you can again create uh, more VNICs, just like how we did create VNIC. Instead of ether sub, I'll say I can't do the same name here. So I have got a, I have created an aggreg aggregation. Uh, I mean uh, a VNIC on top of the aggregation. Uh, uh, you have to note the order in which I am doing. Uh, you can you can't create aggregations of VNIC. You can you have to create only you can create only VNICs on top of aggregations. The other way around is not possible. Okay, so flows. So I am creating a flow in this command. I am creating a flow over here, and I am saying on this on top of this particular interface, physical interface, I can give uh, any uh, interface over here, and I am saying for TCP and local port 20, which is my FTP data port. I am creating a flow called FTP data, and I am saying okay, max bandwidth is 100 Mbps. Uh, so there's no uh, guarantee as such uh, for in bandwidth. It's only uh, this one. So in flows, there are only two properties which I can set. One is bandwidth and one is uh, uh, CPUs. I can say um, assign this particular flow only to the CPUs one and two. And account ADM. Uh, account ADM is extended account management. That is, uh, you can say how much bandwidth was consumed by this particular flow, or how many bytes were uh, set, how many. Uh, uh, so, uh, what any kind of accounting that you want to do, we'll, I'll just show you an example of that also. Um, so, ADM show flow. Oh, sorry. Okay, it doesn't show anything because actually I created that flow ADM and then deleted it also. So, if I do, uh, what is the syntax? Yeah. Show usage. It. Uh, Okay, before that. So account ADM shows uh, what all uh, I have activated and not activated. For accounting, for this one I have accounted, uh, used this file as you can see here. Oh, I have not given the file name, sorry. So account ADM minus C, I can give any file name over here saying that log all this accounting information into this particular file. And I can give that same. Oh, sorry. Low ADM. So since I had already deleted it, it's not showing it. I say minus A. That means show me accounting information for those even which are deleted. So even if you have created and deleted any particular interface or VNIC or uh, any flows, it will still maintain all these things. So you can still get uh, flows for uh, earlier this ones also. So okay, one one more thing about bandwidth management and accounting. Um, Solaris never had these features before, and whole bunch of other companies had products which could do bandwidth management and then accounting, because that's what most of your ISVs or ISVs wanted. They wanted to know uh, how much uh, users are using, how much bandwidth they are using. They wanted to keep uh, restrict their bandwidth, saying somebody is taking 2 Mbps line, they have to, they cannot cross 2 Mbps, and they wanted to charge per. Uh, this one. So if you are crossing, say, some particular limit, free limit or something like that, they, the user has to be charged. So there was no such software in Solaris. So people made huge amount of money uh, and selling such software on Solaris. Now it's all there and it's free. Okay. So what next? One thing is APIs. There is no API right now. As I said, uh, Crossbow decides which one, which Nix we needs to use for which hardware ring. So there's no uh, user control. But if I know that uh, my, I, I'm using a HTTP server, I need I have to create so many other flows as well as other Vnix as well. But I, this is a HTTP server, so I need some physical rings for my um, HTTP server. In which case, I can create a flow which will use my this one uh, particular hardware. So there's no such provision right now, but uh, it can be provided. Uh, I mean, uh, that's in the plans rather. And it, the, these APIs will be there at all levels, not in the even in the user land. Right now, DLADM, FluidM, they use commands and uh, libraries. They have a, our own library which is not exported. Um, so all these library interfaces, the plan is to make them also uh, available, so that you can write programs which can directly use these things. 
not only in the application land, but even in the kernel land. You can decide, okay, um, for this I need more bandwidth, for this I less bandwidth. All these configurations can be done inside inside the kernel. Another thing is input statistics and accounting. Along with that, I want to have input statistics and to get much finer details. Uh, bandwidth guarantee. This is one major uh, uh, project is doing on now. Um, right now, what you can only do is limit. You can say for this much, it cannot cross this uh, maximum of 10 Mbps. But there's no guarantee that I can even reach 10 Mbps. If I have created, uh, if I have a 10 MB line, I have 20 services running. I can guarantee 10 MB for all of them. I'm sorry, I can uh, give a maximum bandwidth of 10 Mbps for all of them. But there is only 10 Mbps available. Um, that's possible to do that now. But uh, that's like, it's like quota. So the max bandwidth is like quota. So you don't have reservation. I can't, if I reserve uh, 10 Mbps for a particular flow, and that should not be used by anybody else, even if the, nobody else is using that. MVPs. So that is being planned. Intervening fast path. You saw all those trees, right? So if packet is going from one VNIC to another VNIC belonging to some other uh, ether stub and all that, so it has to traverse that whole thing, um, which is okay right now. But then it takes time. If I know that if this packet can be, is going to another VNIC which is in the same system and it's all VNICs, then I can short circuit. I can directly pass this packet directly over there. So that should improve the performance. Right now, uh, Solaris already does that, that is in uh, IP and TCP layer. That means if a packet comes still IP, if I know that uh, the destination IP is on my same system, he will not send it down at all, he will directly loop back. In fact, when uh, uh, a connection is made itself, TCP finds out whether the destination is on the same system. Even if the IP address is different, uh, you find out if the destination is on the same system and then you short circuit. That means the packet does not go below TCP. As soon as you, uh, uh, the packet goes to TCP, he will directly pass it onto the TCP module on the other stream. So it's just a short circuit. So you have uh, extremely high bandwidth on your uh, local systems. So which is not there right now for VNIC. So that's being planned. Okay, improve flow performance for dumb NICs. That means uh, 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 now you know about the hardware classifications. Uh, if for flows, if you don't have enough uh, hardware rings or something, like that, you start using soft rings, and you have a software classification for that. And for flows, uh, uh, if you have a lot of flows, uh, then the, it doesn't scale well. Uh, it's all uh, one particular link list, so you just go traverse and as soon as you get a packet, you try matching your flow packet, saying does it match this, does it match this, does it match this. So it's uh, one serial, this one. And it takes time. If you have created a lot of flows, the performance drops uh, drastically. Mm -hmm. So that's being planned to improve as well. And oh, dynamic resource assignment. That is, uh, um, on a Monday morning, my SMTP traffic is high because everybody is checking mails. On a Friday evening, uh, everybody is browsing because they want to plan for their weekend. So my HTTP traffic is high. Uh, so all these kind of things. Uh, if you have uh, bound your uh, flows to a particular ring, uh, you are, okay, you have get get performance, better performance. But then that can change. The situation can change because Monday is different, Friday is different, and I want to use uh, the right resources for when the uh, bandwidth requirement is higher. So I can dynamically switch. Okay, I can say for this flow, use her hardware link. But now the uh, bandwidth or the traffic is low, so okay, I don't want to use that. Somebody else who wants that ring will start using it. Okay, so these are the references, crossbow project. Everything that I said uh, uh, is there in the docs and much more information, all kernel implementation, how it works. Everything is there in the docs, this one. And you can join crossbow discuss as well. Since its project is integrated, there's not much traffic, but you can you'll still see some traffic about planning for the next phase. Yeah, that's about it. And yeah. Oh. And, uh, and uh, I've talked to a couple of other people, they seem the same behavior. Oh. It's, it's occasional memory, it's not completely reproducible. Oh. Well, it seems like a bug. Okay, I'll, I have, I'll, I'll follow the bug on it. Yeah, I have not uh, seen that before. Okay. I'll figure out a way to kind of do it probably reliable. Ah, okay. Uh, one thing about that is uh, uh, as soon as the system comes up, uh, now because of SMF, all these things are done asynchronously. So your login screen might be up, but 
when you log in your Unix, there is a DLM GMT, there are some processes which are running which will plumb all these things. So it will go through your configuration files. Uh, so whenever you do DLM create Unix or something, they are all saved in a file. So next time you reboot, it will look at the file and then configure these things when the system is coming up. So it will run those commands again. It might take some time maybe. Is it, was it immediately after you rebooted or was it after some time? Oh, yeah, then it's definitely a bug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Can you show um, IF config minus A? Okay. Yeah. Nothing? Okay, so you still have the plum uh, aggregate. Yeah. So I have created aggregation, so I can even plumb here. What about the next plumb minus R8? Oh, nothing. Because I have not plumbed, I have just plumbed the KCA AGR1, so now you'll see just see it. I have not plumbed any IP addresses here. It's not up. It's not up. So I, if I make it up or if I add an IP address here, you can see the routing entries over there. I can just show that. So I have plumbed some IP addresses here. Uh, this is a Unix name which I have plumbed now. And if I say nestat minus A or ARP minus AN, you will see IP addresses belong to your zone only and nothing outside it. So nestat minus S shows your uh, uh, configuration or all your network traffic only for your zone and nothing outside it. But if I do nestat minus here, this shows uh, traffic for, okay, I mean it's too long anyway. So it shows uh, your traffic only for your global zone and not for your local zones. Yeah, okay, done. Hello? Any other, yeah, thank you.